Hi guys, I am sitting on my dad's chair, look at this old rickety thing, from the 1970s. Whoa, tip us back so far, whoa. Um, <laughs> and I'm in the outback, as you can see. Doing some renovations. Um, and this video is really about the, my conception journey and the two week wait. So, I just wanted to touch a little bit about on um, what my journey has been like with all three babies. So with Bodhi, Mark and I decided we want to get pregnant. We, we were desperate to have a baby together. We were in love and he already had a son and he was such an amazing dad and we just felt like we wanted to get pregnant. Um, by the way, we only knew each other for about six months. Um, but it ended up being the right decision. So it took us collectively six months to get pregnant with Bodhi. And what I realized was I didn't really know much about my cycle. I didn't know when I ovulated. I didn't know the signs. I just wasn't that in tune with my body. And for me, what I, what I think makes the conception journey so much easier once you make that decision to have a baby is to really get in tune with your body and who you are and um, just the way your body reacts to certain environments. So what is the best environment for you to conceive? So for us, I was very busy, go, 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 and that's very typical of my personality. Um, I was ovulating later in my cycle and I had no idea because I didn't really know much about my own body. So we ended up trying for about six months and it wasn't happening. And then finally I went to see my OBGYN in Los Angeles and she did a few tests and she said, oh, you don't actually ovulate day 14 like a lot of women. And it's funny because I think we're told that women are meant to just ovulate in the middle of the cycle, day 14. But I was a late ovulator, so I was actually missing my fertile period completely. Um, and so the next month I got an ovulation stick. I did the clear blue ovulation test. And back back in those days, it wasn't that long ago, but um, it was just, they only had um, the one that came up with the blank smiley face or the, um, there'd be nothing in the circle, which means you weren't ovulating. Or if you've got a smiley face, you're about to ovulate. Nowadays, they have one with um, a lead up to ovulation. So they have a flashing smiley face, clear blue. And then the day you ovulate, it just holds with a smiley face on there. So that's how I got pre pregnant the second time around using that version of the clear blue ovulation stick. Um, I highly recommend them because it takes the the guesswork out of it. Um, so, you know, we were very happy to be pregnant after six months with Bodhi. Once Bodhi was with us, um, when he was about 13, 14 months, I decided I wanted to start trying for a baby. Um, we started trying probably when he was about 13 months and it took another six months before I got pregnant and finally I got pregnant. Um, and I was getting really anxious at that point because I was using the ovulation sticks. It wasn't happening. And I think that just the stress of wanting to get pregnant so badly was not helping the case. Um, so the month we got pregnant, I think it was July 2015, we were elated. And I got my positive pregnancy test at about 11 DPO, which is 11 days past ovulation. Um, typically, I'm an early tester. So with Bodhi, I actually got my first um, positive at nine DPO, nine days past ovulation. Um, and this time around, I didn't get my positive until 11 DPO. Um, we went to the first heartbeat scan and it, we had such a traumatic experience because we were told we had a molar pregnancy. We weren't told in that first appointment. We were told in the first appointment that they had no idea what it was, but it wasn't a viable pregnancy. I had to go and see a bunch of different specialists for someone to actually recognize that that was a molar pregnancy and I had to go immediately to the hospital for a DNC. I had, oh, mosquito. I had never been to the hospital before. I'd never been in hospital and it was just a really terrifying situation and I did 
the very typical Teresa thing and I just soldiered through um, and I remember I had to leave two days later to go shoot Berlin Syndrome so I was in just this really emotional headspace um, so then after that we were told we weren't able to try to conceive again for another three months because um, my HCG levels had to come down back down to zero because there was a the chance that the um, tumor the benign tumor tumor would grow again and you wouldn't know whether your HCG numbers are going up because of this tumor or because of the pregnancy so they say wait till you hit zero and then you know when you're pregnant your HCG numbers are going up just because you're pregnant so we waited um, a little while mark and i were kind of not in the same place at the right time so we actually didn't start trying to conceive again until probably that december um or january and um my it was just such a painful experience those three months that we tried to conceive before we did conceive forest because the one month in february when i thought that i was pregnant a hundred percent sure that i was pregnant I wasn't and it was it really took a toll on our relationship um I was devastated I was crying I was on the floor I had been symptom spotting like but I had sore boobs I I was feeling nauseous I had the headaches I I looked bloated I, I thought I was pregnant and I remember just feeling so disheartened I think especially because of our the trauma we experienced surrounding the molar pregnancy and then not being pregnant was just really devastating. And my husband said, you need to let go of this. You've come, become too obsessed with the idea of having a second child. You need to rework your thinking surrounding this. And so what I did was I came to the most peaceful place surrounding it in that March. And I just said, I am so grateful that I have the most beautiful little boy who I am head over heels in love with. He's my entire world. I was able to have a great pregnancy, have a wonderful birth with him and be able to raise this incredible child. And there are many women out there who don't even get the opportunity to raise a child. So I am grateful and I have abundance in my life and that is all I need. Sure enough, that's the month I got pregnant. Um, it was so funny. I had been listening to med meditation at night time and a lot of Alan Watts stuff on YouTube. I would play it and really listen to what he was saying. I just came to this place where I felt incredibly happy in my life in every aspect. And then, and then I got pregnant um, with Forrest and I had the most beautiful pregnancy and the dreamiest birth. I could could not have asked for a better birth with him and he is just heaven on earth the sweetest little boy giggle pot kind loving affectionate amazing so what a wonderful gift in non-attachment i let go of my attachment surrounding the outcome of becoming pregnant and my baby came to me which was really beautiful um now this time around it's been very interesting because mark and i tried for a a few months maybe three months didn't get pregnant so then I went off we were loosely trying we weren't trying the way we've been trying in the past which was a.m. p.m. a.m. p.m. ovulation sticks I didn't have any ovulation sticks we were just kind of like all right like every three days if we have sex then we might get pregnant didn't get pregnant for three months and I thought oh okay well this is typical it usually takes me around six months to get pregnant then I went off and I shot a movie a horse movie um, and then, uh, we started trying again and I had this really strange cycle because I ovulated. I know that I ovulated cause I'm actually much more aware of my body. I ovulated and then I got my period only a week later and I thought that was really strange. Um, and so I thought, oh, maybe this is a month where I'm ovulating twice. Um, so what we did was we were just like, look, we're not going to really officially try until we get to Bali. We were going to Bali and that was going to be at the month where we really were gung-ho. We were going to start trying. And then so we were like, whatever, let's just have 
you know, sex whenever we want to and um, we'll see what happens. So I guess my implant, that might have been implantation bleeding. Not exactly sure, but I found out I was pregnant and I was sh pretty shocked to be honest. Um, in Bali because I was like when did this happen and it's really quite liberating because I think with both my boys I knew exactly when it was happening and actually they say when you conceive a girl um, a lot of the time it's not really around ovulation so I wonder if we just sort of conceived on the tail end of um, ovulation or five days before ovulation but um, we were both like, wait, what? We didn't even really try this month. Um, we, you know, we were doing a lot of practices where, you know, I made this bracelet with, um, the, the baby name of the girl, um, because Mark has been really desperate for a daughter. And so I made this bracelet, um, and I was wearing this bracelet with my boy's names and the girl's name on it. And, um, we were doing a lot of kind of practices of like calling in a, another baby and, you know, my boy's baby name, I'd been writing down a lot and just, you know, putting it out there that we were ready for this new being to come to us. Um, and yeah, I think we were, we were shocked and we were kind of in disbelief as well because we were using these pregnancy tests that were, um, uh, cheap to say the least. And so I was like, am I misreading this? Am I actually pregnant? We'd gone away on this like really fun camping trip with our friends and I'd been talking to them about how I was going to conceive, like, oh, this is going to be my, you know, first month of trying to conceive. And I thought that I was going to be ovulating in the next few days um, because I had had a period, which now I'm like, oh, it must have been implantation bleeding. Um, and it was just so interesting how it all happened and it's, it's quite nice that it happened this way because that hasn't, that hasn't been our experience previously. We've been very like on the ball, knowing when it's happening, knowing when our fertile period is. And with this one, I couldn't tell you which day we got pregnant. Um, I look at my dating scans and I was like, all right, it was right before we left for Bali. So around like the 29th or the 30th, around that time um, of July um, 31st, maybe, I don't know, in that period. Um, so it's quite funny to see the differences in our journeys. And, um, so I didn't really have a very typical two week wait. Um, I did feel immediately feel a little strange, but I thought it was just adjusting to being in another country. Um, and then sure enough, we got the pregnancy test and that's what it was. So, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about that. For women who are in their two week wait, I feel you because I spent over 16 months of my life like going from these increments, two week in increments, like two weeks until I ovulate. All right, now we're in the fertile period. Two more weeks until I can test. And I'm a chronic tester. I will test three times a day without fail. I tested with this pregnancy up until I was nine weeks pregnant almost every day um i think maybe also because i was a little bit in disbelief how it all happened and um yeah so oh gosh try in your two-week wait if you can to do stuff for you to i know gosh it's such a cliche isn't it to relax but to really take your mind off of it um do some meditation practices, maybe do some yoga if that's a part of your life. Um, lounge around, eat a chunk of pineapple. That's what I always used to eat, the pineapple core when I was waiting to conceive. Um, baby aspirin is really good too for implantation. And just try and be in a good headspace. It will happen. Um, whatever way it happens, it will happen. So I'm sending love to you guys. If you're on that journey, I feel you. I'm with you. And the very best of luck. Bye.